Mar bubbles and diskin and Ben K Connor. No in white and hacker. And you've had time to reflect on Saturday's result and obviously the massive title win. Just how impressive has the team been this season? We've been incredible. Um right across the board. And you know, culminating on Saturday's victory. But um, you know, you always look to that game, but it is a reflection of thirty-two games. Um, where we have been relentless throughout the season and the, the points tally has been remarkable and um, the players have got to take an incredible amount of credit for that and um, you know the questions we ask of them in training the standard and the intensity of the training is something that we've had players come in this year that have said the the, the intensity the level of training um, is a lot higher than what they've been used to um, and you know that's testament to Jay and Craig and their preparation going into them training sessions the detail that they go into and then obviously the feedback we get from GPS and uh, and, and all the data you know shows that they're working incredibly hard um, and yeah you know, I can't speak highly enough of them and everybody has to take credit it's very difficult at this point to sort of start naming people you know and, and your thanks to them because there's so many people right from the top from Gary Dewurst all the way down to uh, the volunteers who do all their hard work so to name people is is very difficult and um, but you know it's a big thank you to to everyone because it is definitely an uh, across the board effort that creates you know what we have just done this season so i um, very very proud of that and everybody should you know um, take great credit and and enjoy the rest there's been a number of occasions obviously this season where like we speak on social media about nomads never die and it's been no no more prevalent than this season you just think back to kind of Cardiff met away Baller at home on the opening day Barry away as well again just what does that say about the the character of your team I think it's I think it's slightly different the, the dynamics of the team this year and the way we've played. Um, we've been more um, more forward thinking. You know, it's not always been about making sure the opposition are nullified. It's been about how we can impose ourselves in games and how we can ask different questions. You know, and at times we've had to make brave decisions in game to go and win the game. Um, sometimes that leaves you a little bit open, but we've been so on the front foot. We've been able to force teams back. You know, with a kind of a three-three-four, where we've been able to pin teams in um, and ask different questions, and you know, I think it's um, I think it's a credit to the team and credit to everyone the way we've evolved. Um, you know, I found it really interesting that the statistics this season. I don't take too much notice of them, I can't, unless they're in favour of us. And then I will make a big point of them. <laughs> but um, you know, the, the the most dominant team possession-wise in the league this year has been TNS, and that's that's a given. That's the identity of their team. But you know, when it comes to the team that are second in the possession base this season, you know, you would look at maybe Barry. Cardiff met Newtown, you know, um, Druids had a period where they were trying to play out from the back and it's none of them, it's Connors Key. Mm. And, you know, with with Andy Morrison, there comes an identity which is unfortunate for the players and the football club because we don't get the credit we deserve. But, you know, when it comes to possession, we're the second most productive team in the, in the league this season. When it comes to crosses into the box, we are at least two times and at times five times ahead of every other club in the league. The top three crosses of a ball this season in the league are number one, Declan Poole, number two, Danny Davis, and number three, Aaron Williams, all at Connors Key. Mm -hmm. So again, it, it creates the identity of what our team is. And again, we won't get the credit. People will just say that they've won back-to-back -back titles because they got a long throw. Um, I hope they keep thinking that way, Nick. You know, we joked about this at the weekend. Keep it quiet. Don't go telling anybody what we're doing and let them all think that it's just because they got a long throw because the stats don't say that, you know. And again, you can't win and do what we've done over that period of time because you've got somebody that can throw a ball into the box. In, uh, the fact that every, nearly every team now has that weapon which we've been using for five years but now all of a sudden it's fashionable to have that again as credit to how we do things um but yeah we've we've been on the front foot we've been very aggressive in the way we've played trying to nullify the opposition and also maximize what qualities we have which is putting balls into the box we are um 
we average between three and seven times the entries into the box of every team that we play. The closest team this year have had, we've had three times more entries into the box than them. The most productive has been up to seven times, where in games we've had 40 entries into the box to their four. Um, and we've, we pick up the second ball with the top team at picking up a second ball, with the top team on end product from set plays, with the top team from when we enter the box, and we pick up the second phase of the second ball and recycle it with number one in that area. So we're doing so many things right that have culminated as winning the league and, and been very good this season. So I think the players, I think Craig and Jay, I think have to take great credit for, for the way we've evolved over the, the last couple of years, you know, and gone from where we had to find a way to win and to get into Europe um, by hook or crook. And I, and I think we're certainly a different club to that team in them first couple of seasons. And let's hope everyone doesn't take any notice of it and keep saying after the game, we all know what Connors Key do, because um, as long as they're thinking like that, then we've got the upper hand. In terms of your interview with Scorio on Saturday after the game, you sounded a bit potentially like you might not be here next season, but obviously you've met with the chairman today. Just what does that hold for the future of the club? Well, I think it's really positive. A really positive meeting um, with the chairman. And you know, looking at a way where we can be sustainable. And that's the key, Nick. Um, you know, I can keep going to my chairman and asking him to put his hand in his pocket. Um, but when that pocket that money is coming from the same source and it's Gary Jewers it makes it difficult for him to continually keep funding the football team so we have to find a way you know we've had a, a model where we've been mm, half and half really you know half full time half part time and we've looked at the structure of that and we've looked at where the the, the main players have played in the team and all that you know we come to a decision that um, we're going to go back part time we're going to be completely part-time going forward and um, and we believe that makes it more realistic for us to be able to go season after season and not end up as a, with all due respect to every club that has their own financial problems, but you know, your Clenethley, Neath, Rill, Barry, you know, we don't want to be the team that will go and win the league and then go bust within a couple of years. We've got to find a way to stay sustainable and, uh, and what we spoke about today was will reflect in that in us going back to a part-time model um, and it also that means that I go back to being a part-time manager and I, I spoke about the workload um, and how hard you know and the the extremes that we go to to be successful you know that the dynamics of that slightly change so you know it appealed to me and um, and I'm excited about it because I know that the energy I know the quality of the playing staff and I know the the preparation and the intensity for every game won't won't drop off it'll still be that game um, where it's whether it whoever it is in that first game of the season that's all that's in front of us that's all we need to do is find a way to win that game when we get that one out of the way then we need to focus on the next game before you know it you're at 10 games you're then at the split and then you know as long as you're looking at one game at a time and I believe in a part-time model um, I, I think we can compete. Can we compete with the uh, on paper the biggest team in the league? That'll be we'll see that in time, um, because Gary Dewhurst, his identity as a human being is not Connor's key. Um, I believe that that TNS it's slightly different. You know, uh, Mike Harris will be happy to work at a loss year on year as long as he gets his title it doesn't matter because that's that's who he is where gary is slightly different in the way he, his business is and his life you know he's built an incredible football club with, an, with a fantastic um, structure in place with an academy um, and he wants that to be here long after he's gone and if we keep throwing money at it trying to chase after what tns are doing we're talking about um, directors of football, you know, sporting directors, head of recruitment, um, manager, head coach, and then putting their budget to another level. We cannot compete with that. We can't compete with it. It's as simple as that. And as the reasons I've just explained, you know, the, the relationship between Connors Key and, and Gary Dewars is different to what TNS and Mike Harris is. And, um, and good luck to them. And only time will tell how that affects the outcome. But, you know, we're in a really strong position 
um, we're the champions of the league, we're going into the Champions League, um, we have a, a very, very competitive part-time budget and um, I'm excited by it and I'm ready to go again, you know, I really am, I think, uh, you know, uh, the trip back with the players and, and speaking to the players over the last couple of days and then speaking with players tonight in relation to going forward and when I'm seeing the eyes of whether it's young lads or whether it's senior players and the intensity and the desire and the fire is still there that inspires me to go I don't want to leave this I want to be part of this going forward and um, yeah uh, I'm as positive tonight after speaking to Gary this afternoon uh, as I've been in a long time and I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge. You talk about meeting with the players today obviously preparations for next season getting underway just two days removed from the end of last season has it been a positive set of meetings with the players? It's been terrific yeah you know every player I've spoke to have understood the situation understood that you know, longevity of the football club is much more important than um, putting ourselves in financial difficulties. So I get that, I understand that. And um, speaking with the players, you know, going forward, there, there's just two or three lads that would be completely full time and understand the situation. Um, and the lads that we have um, options on in their contracts, you know, they'll be re engaged. And then the senior players and those players who are out of contract, again, you know, everybody's looking at it the same and want to want to do what we did again. You know, they want that challenge, and and you know we want to be. If we're the part-time club, uh, then we want to be the top part-time club, and we want to make sure that we're challenging against what will be the only full-time club in TNS, and make sure we're asking questions to them. And as I said earlier on, you know, one game at a time, we we won't be a million miles off. Obviously talking about preparations for next season, but preparations for Europe ultimately start as well. Obviously they've only got three weeks off for the players. Just another relentless campaign again, despite all of this. Yeah, and it's going to be, you know, we're giving the players off till the Tuesday the 8th of June. And um, and then we come back and we've got the best part of maybe five weeks before we go into the Champions League first first round. And um, even that three weeks is something that we've not had in the past. Um, and... You, you 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 look at that, and today we'll meet again tomorrow. Me, Craig, and Jay, and we look at the possible pre-season friendlies, and we look at targets that we have away from the group. Obviously, there's players that are gonna gonna leave. You know, there may be three or four players um, that will leave us, uh, which will leave, open up opportunities to bring other people in. We'll be talking about recruitment tomorrow, and the players that we're targeting, and um, and then we'll look at who we can get as much competitive games as we possibly can, whether that means Ireland, whether it means Scotland, or you know, in the English system, or, or against teams that are in Europe with us. So we need to find them five or six games and make sure they're competitive, and then gradually build into to that first game in the Champions League. And as you said, the, you know, we've, I've said to the players tonight, you know, took their weights and, and thanked them for their efforts this season, uh, told them what I'll be expecting of them next season, told them what and Jay will send across tomorrow what their maintenance is over the next three weeks and then we'll start again and it's it's not about pre-season it's not a pre-season at Connors Key it's not a pre-season at TNS or even Bala these days because we carry on you know you're not looking at your eight to ten weeks off where you might put on three or four kilos and you'll have a week of running before you start those days are gone but it's gone for us mm -hmm. because we are literally the players will maintain the players will not put any weights on over the next two to three weeks and they'll come in and they'll they'll be doing their two or three runs and their and their gym sessions leading into that first training session on tuesday the 8th and then we'll gradually build from there so you know it's not about a, a three weeks of hard work and then looking at that you know we'll just gradually build our way back in so we'll, we'll ease off and then we'll gradually build back in again uh, and it's really exciting because you know I know the, the the excitement of the Champions League last year would leading into that and we've got that all to come again and you know we're we're really excited really excited going forward the players tonight like I said the eyes I saw the um, intensity and the desire to go again because what was done last season's done you know our preparation starts now and and for ourselves TNS um, Bala, Barry over the last couple of seasons you're really, you're, you're, your European campaign is part of your preparation going into the start of the, the new season so we're in a really really healthy position um, like I said I'm, I'm excited because it's a different kind of challenge from the last couple of years 
but um, it's also a great opportunity again to show that um, you know we can overcome teams like we have this season. You know, I said it last season that our budget was half of what TNS was. This season it was probably sixty percent. Next season it'll be thirty percent of what um, TNS's budget will be. I see that as a great challenge, a great challenge to me and my team to um, to show that it's not all about money. There's other ways of winning games of football. Just in terms of the Champions League as well, obviously already a, a great number of other teams qualified from other countries, including the likes of Red Star Belgrade, uh, Dinamo Zagreb, Olympiacos, but also Dinamo Tbilisi are actually in there as well. So a potential another tie against them, possibly for a bit of maybe revenge from last season, possibly. So, so Tbilisi won their league. Yes. They won the Georgian League this year, and we took them to 97 minutes last year, where we give away a penalty after 97 minutes. Again, that excites me. Mm. That the performance we put in last year against a team you know that um, had dropped into the Europa like us that uh, we managed to compete against them and we give a great account of ourselves against them Sarajevo um, I would take Sarajevo again you know with the knowledge that we have and how well we played on the nights and um, so yeah it's it's great the names you just mentioned there Nick that's and, and it will increase you know the um, the quality of the teams that we'll be coming up against um, are really exciting and you love a challenge and uh, Connors Key we love that and you know like I say we will we'll leave an impression wherever we play we always do and um, yeah it's great and really looking forward